Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is the difference between acute stress disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder? So this is an excellent question, and I think oftentimes there is some confusion around what acute distress disorder is specifically and how it relates to PTSD. So let's start with post-traumatic stress disorder. We'd expect to see symptoms met in specific areas like intrusion, avoidance, negative mood, and arousal when we talk about PTSD. So PTSD would have a qualifying trauma, so that would be direct exposure to a trauma or witnessing a traumatic event, having something happen to a close friend or relative, or repeated exposure to aversive details of a trauma. Then we have the symptom criteria. So it starts with intrusion. So intrusion would be recurrent memories, recurrent dreams, or dissociate reactions. Next we have avoidance. So here we'd expect to see avoiding memories, thoughts, and feelings associated with the traumatic event, as well as avoiding external reminders. After that we have negative alterations in cognition and mood. So here we'd expect to see an inability to remember details of the traumatic event, negative beliefs, negative emotions, and distorted cognition, distorted thinking. In the last category for PTSD, we have arousal and reactivity. So symptoms we may see in this group would be anger outbursts, reckless or self-destructive behavior, hypervigilance, sleep disturbance, and difficulty concentrating. So if an individual meets the diagnostic criteria in terms of the symptom criteria and a qualifying trauma, these symptoms would have to be in place for one month for a diagnosis of PTSD to be given. Now we can compare these symptoms to what we see in acute stress disorder. Now with acute stress disorder, the symptoms would be present for three days or more, but not more than a month. And if we think about the categories I mentioned for post-traumatic stress disorder, the trauma, intrusion, avoidance, negative cognition and mood, and arousal and reactivity, we can compare those to what we see in acute stress disorder. Now in acute stress disorder, the trauma, intrusion, and avoidance areas are the same. There's no difference between those areas in acute stress disorder and what we see in post-traumatic stress disorder. Now with arousal and reactivity from post-traumatic stress disorder, in acute stress disorder, this is just referred to as arousal. And it has all the same symptom criteria we see in post-traumatic stress disorder under arousal and reactivity, except it does not have reckless self-destructive behavior. Other than that, it's identical. Then we move on to negative mood. So acute stress disorder has negative mood instead of negative alterations in cognition and mood. Except here in acute stress disorder, negative mood just has one symptom criterion, and that's an inability to experience positive emotion. Now acute stress disorder has one more category that we don't see in post-traumatic stress disorder, at least not in the same way, and that's the dissociative category. So under the dissociative category in acute stress disorder, there's an altered sense of reality and an inability to remember details of the trauma. Now that inability to remember details criterion is in the criteria for post-traumatic stress disorder, except it's under the negative alterations in cognition and mood category. There is no dissociative category in post-traumatic stress disorder. There are dissociative specifiers like depersonalization and derealization, but there's no dissociative category in the symptom criteria the same way as we see in acute stress disorder. So with the symptom criteria being fairly similar between acute stress disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder, why do we have acute stress disorder? Why is it a classification? Well, the idea behind acute stress disorder is that there could be a classification that could help identify individuals that were at risk for developing post-traumatic stress disorder. We know that about 50% of individuals diagnosed with acute stress disorder will develop post-traumatic stress disorder. Now to break down more of this percentage in terms of individuals who have acute stress disorder developing post-traumatic stress disorder, we have to get into the area of subclinical diagnosing. So we can think of acute stress disorder as coming in three forms, essentially. Somebody would not have it, so none of the criteria would be met. Someone meets the full criteria, 
so they have the diagnosis acute stress disorder, or they have a subclinical presentation. This is a presentation where an individual meets some of the criteria for acute stress disorder, but not enough to be given the diagnosis. So here's what we know about the development of PTSD after a diagnosis or lack of diagnosis of acute stress disorder. Of those individuals who meet the full criteria for acute stress disorder, around 80% will develop post-traumatic stress disorder. For individuals who do not meet any of the criteria for acute stress disorder, only about 4% will develop post-traumatic stress disorder. And the remaining group, of course, would be the subclinical group. So of those who have a subclinical presentation of acute stress disorder, around 60% will develop post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, these data, of course, are gathered from assessments that take place right after a trauma, which makes sense because that's the only time we'd expect someone to be assessed for acute stress disorder. I hope you found this description of acute stress disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder to be interesting. Thanks for watching.